Thank you all for being here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've got a lot to share with you. I've got a framework um, that we're going to make make real in in a in a very uh, clear way today. So uh, I've got some some real teaching for you. I want to honor you for being here and taking the time. <clears throat> I'm really excited. Uh, there's a lot of folks that just just so you know, like in the community already of the microscope community in within my world, um, there's like over you know, over 300 people involved already. So there's there's a huge movement growing right now. A lot of people are involved. A lot of people are really excited. Many of you are here. I see your names. I know who you are. <laughs> and that's that's the amazing thing is that we really are a community that we know each other. We know the people who who are using the microscopes. Um, and uh, the conversations that we have are absolutely next level. And that's one of the ones that we're going to have today. We're going to have a next level conversation together. So thank you for being here. I want to start, I want to begin because you've made the time to be here. So I want to honor that. All right. So who's who the soil biology primer? I'm going to come at it with, a, with probably a, a different angle than you've seen before, especially if you watch the mastermind. But before we get anywhere further, I am Matt Powers. I used to be a ski racer in New England and became a musician, play with people like this. I met my wife in the midst of all that madness in life when I was very young and uh, my wife, when she, when she was very young, got cancer uh, and it completely changed our lives. It became a uh, health became the focus of our lives and food and then microbes and all these other things became the focus because it all became tied into how to fight cancer and prevent it from coming back. I left that life. Uh, well, I left the band in New York and then I went to California and I started songwriting in LA for a little while. And then I did a national tour, but it didn't go that great. <laughs> and then I ended up subbing um, in Fresno, um, real talk. And so, you know, um, Fresno uh, is hard. Madera County is really hard. And that's where I became a full-time teacher. And uh, during this time period, I, I got my master's degree. We had our second son. I started melding cooking and seed saving and heirloom vegetables with, with teaching. And I fell in love with it. I started doing things that people thought were impossible. This is a corn I adapted in North America from Peru, from the highlands of Peru. No one had created ears and I used permaculture logic to figure it out. It was permaculture that really unlocked so much of my hope uh, and uh, a lens for solutions and service. So this is a throw sow garden. Um, I threw the seeds on the ground and they grew like this. Uh, but I'd, I'd trained them with several seasons of saving seed from the best plants. So I put this all into a curriculum because I taught at a school that had no books. And so we always were making curriculum. And so I just was like, well, I'll just make a curriculum for permaculture for K through 12. And this was the, the first time anything had ever been made for K through 12 in permaculture for, 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 for that demographic, right? And th because that was what I was trained for, it was easy. And it went through the roof and I, this became my life. And so the books went all over the world. They got translated into multiple translations. I work with people from all over the world. I became a speaker, started helping different organizations, and I became a citizen scientist in the process. My boys grew up. My wife is still here. And health challenges are things that she faces and I face as well. And we, we try to support each other and do the best we can. Um, but yeah, and then this year I'm doing like, I'm really focused on health this year. I know so much more than I ever have. So I'm really, really excited about, about health. <laughs> and uh, enthusiasm is, you know, a part of who I am. I love teaching. I love creating curriculum. I've created over 24 books in the past eight years. So I really, I really focus though on a bridge to a regenerative future. And that's why these things, these products of that focus are kind of like things that are, are are steps on a process to a much bigger goal. So what if you got good at using a microscope? What if you were able to use a microscope to figure things out? 
to problem solve, to diagnose your plant's health or your compost safety or your soil's fertility. What if that was in a part of your house and you could just go to that room and flip those things on and it's always set up like this. And what if, what if you had that, a home laboratory? And what if you understood your soil and your compost so deeply? Like, I mean, the soil right outside in your garden, but all the soil in your bioregion, all the compost, anything that you, you, you get in contact with that you understand. So I once read this study that, you know, I've spent a long time thinking about, and it's this study. And if you know this study, you know why I think about it. So it's the exploring the relationship between microscope-based soil biology measurements and tomato yield in South Africa using principal component analysis. So I had heard about the tomatoes, South Africa, the soil lab down there, the Soil Food Web Institute down there, and the success they had, I followed up and found this online and read about it and studied it. And I recognized the methods, of course, but then to see their conclusions and results was, was worrisome. And this is, there's more, you know, there's more of these types of stories and we'll get into them as we go. But this was, was something that was like an alarm bell to me because as you can read here, it says when farmers at ZZ2 were questioned about why they were not supporting the soil biology test offered by the Soil Food Web um, Institute of South Africa laboratory, they complained that the metric was not useful in predicting yield or risk of soil-borne disease. Our results confirmed their observations. So total active fungi and bacteria biomass and above ground pasture productivity, right? What is it they're missing? Fungi, just fungi. Which fungi are they talking about? They have this generalized concept of what fungi is. It worries me. Um, and so I, I feel like we there were like when I read this, I felt strongly that this indicated a need. And when I look at the expression of fungi, whether it's like the fungal hyphae, whether it's embodied in a root propagule, you know, a fruit fragment, top left corner, bottom left corner yeasts, right? Or bottom right corner, a very large hyphae with crystals on it. It could be something more like this. And you're like, well, what's that? That's aspergillus, okay? This is why I'm telling people not to like inhale compost fumes lately because I'm reading about aspergillus fumigatus being found in composts. Not good composts, but in composts and in garden soils in the UK specifically. So, so these are pretty identifiable, okay? But then you're like, well, well what is this? And notice the difference, dun, 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 dun. right? You can see it. Everyone can see that there's a difference. Like just hairstyles. Just look, you know, it's different. And this is an IMO collection. This is good. So the context and the subtlety is like really important with this. So which fungi were they looking at? Because in their study, they show no slides, no images. Um, we, we really can't help them. And of course, there's lookalikes. Um, but they couldn't identify verticillum. Um, you look this up, you know, just a Google search, you know, microscope. You can do 400x, but it actually doesn't yield to do the same. You can do Google Scholar. You know, it's crazy that the published literature they they favor not showing you clear things you kind of got gotta buy books that are references um this is a fabulous book um but but it's very clear this is uh, uh stained but it's it's very clear how to identify these things so they didn't have access to this information they were doing those tests that that were listed 
and no, no others. But mycologists know that you can identify pathogenic and non-pathogenic from their form, or at least down to like tentative, which is actually probably the space that most of us should, um, should be expressing uh, a lot of these things that we look at. My story. My story starts with, with my family. You know, um, I'm a family guy. We homeschool. Maybe you were like me and started a garden years ago. And maybe you were like me and you just copied what you saw or read and hope for the best. So I was going off of, you know, Sepp Holzer and, and uh, just copying, right? And, and, and just hope for the best. And they had rationales, but none of it was scientific. You know what I mean? Sepp just lays in fields where they're really sunny and has dreams and then comes up with his ideas that way. That's how he says he gets his best ideas. <laughs> and I love that. And that's beautiful. And more power to that. I want to do more of that. But we need to know, you know what I mean? Especially when we're communicating with other professionals and who have got like livelihoods and acres and thousands of acres on the line. So I couldn't do that, you know, and realistically and like just hope for the best when it was my family's health on the line. So I started digging and researching. And then it first began, you know, I learned about permaculture and I went crazy. A lot of people go crazy, uh, you know, and like plant everything everywhere and go, bah! and you learn so much in this process because you have like 10% die. You know what I mean? You plant just everything everywhere. And then you have all these incredible things that don't die and they just become, it, there's so much, so much you learn that way. So, and that's how I learned. I just did things. I experimented and still to this day, I'm experimenting. Permaculture allowed me to like take, you know, amaranth and just scale it up incredibly fast, uh, how to take landscapes and remediate them incredibly fast, how to grow in, you know, 140 degree soils. Yep. That you can see it for yourself. Um, I put it in the soil and saw how hot it was. And then it was like, this can't be right. And then started going around and saw that there was this differential. And I was like, and, and meanwhile, it was the same meter and it was 112 degrees outside. So I was like, well, if it's the, the, the actual physical thing heating up, all these numbers would change, except they didn't. So, so the ground was hotter than the ambient temperatures, except where there was mulch. This is permaculture logic, right? This is stuff, something we all can do but it changes how you think and view the world when you're like, oh yeah, it's 140 degrees in the soil right there. Cool. I'm going to grow green plants in that with no water. Hmm, three months in, no water. You know, like that empowers you in a completely different way. And then when you're like, oh, it drops below 80 degrees from 140 with mulch and watering. We can do what feels impossible with clear understanding of nature. Permaculture logic is just clear understanding of nature. And that's what I, I've, I've done and strive to do with all the work I, I'm doing with soil is to get out of the way and to create clarity. And so I began to learn about the specific biology at first with EM and then with Elaine um, and yes, I know there's multiple factors. There's plant roots. I mean, if you've seen my regenerative soil stuff, you know, it's a holistic thing, but I'm not going to get into all that because we're talking about plant health pyramid stuff here, not the bottom either. We're talking about the top because only the biology unlocks the top two levels. So you could have everything right. You could be doing everything and your biology stinks. Well you're never going to get this top level of plant health. So this is where their immunological health is, is stimulated to the point of like really pushing things off, really not getting sick, really not getting viruses. Below that, it's like they're easy game, but there are higher level predators that unless you reach this level of biology, they get in. So, so it's really important that we, we understand that the biology, the specific biology 
I know that John Kemp will go vigorous biology and generalize it because, you know, he'll sell you the product, right? I love John. I was ready to earlier this, earlier this week, but it's specific biology. So the correct minerals unlock the lower two levels, but it's the biology. It's this dance. It's this symphony. It's this communication, but it's while I mapped all of these arrows, right. And made them thin enough to communicate this, all these different layers, the thickness of different avenues is what I would want to communicate, but it would create chaos. It would be just noisy as an image. So we really need to clean it up a little bit in our understanding. And we need to go back to that conversation of which fungi are we talking about? Because it makes all the difference. When we understand which fungi and the right microbes that are allowing things to properly cycle, then we unlock the highest levels of expression in our plants. And then we have our soils that are regenerative. They respond to stress with strength and resilience. So in other words, their pH and EH doesn't swing as much. They have buffering from the organic matter and the structure is electrical too. So it has a buffering on the, the, on the actual swing of the redox. But it, it really is managed by the biology. They have the greatest effect. And so we're going to talk about the simplified compost assessment framework today. And that's, and we need to know who we're looking at. We need to disambiguate. That's why we're doing this who's who soil biology primer. But I wanted to give you a framework so that there's an actual usage for this information for you in your actual practice and life. It's not just, you know, one, it, it, I mean, it's one thing to like just show you what things are but it's another, another to give you a tool to actually make a difference in your practice and professionally. Because if you do this professionally and you don't do the things that I'm about to list, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, woo, cause they're easy and they're ridiculously powerful. So I'm really, I'm really honored that you guys are here today and really excited 